Welcome to Bloomington Today. I'm Kaylin Cockreel. Thanks for joining us. Winter in Minnesota gives golf course maintenance crews a chance to polish their mowers and oil their weed whackers. Let's take a look at what staff at Dewan are doing to prepare for the spring course opening several months before the golf season begins. As you drive by Dewan Golf Course, you can see the greens are quiet. The lot not nearly as full as it is on warm summer days. But that doesn't mean staff is hibernating for the winter. In fact, they're doing just the opposite. We have a lot of equipment. I, can't, I couldn't tell you the number of actual mowers we have. We have real mowers, rotary mowers, all the different kinds of mowers that we have. They have to lap the blades in, they have to sharpen the blades, basically tuning up everything. And, and with the amount of equipment we have, if we don't start right after the golf course closes, we'll never finish by the time it starts. We do online maintenance every day at the golf course. If something happens, something breaks, we fix it. But we do all our major repairing and cleaning all winter long. Cleaning mower blades, giving golf carts a tune-up, you name it, Duan maintenance staff have it on their winter to-do list. And that list is a long one lasting from the day Dewan closes in the fall to the day they open in the spring. We don't have time in the summertime. We're, they're, they're too busy maintaining the golf course rather than the equipment. So we maintain the, the equipment in the winter, the golf course in the summer. And given the mild winter we've seen so far this year, some golf courses in the area have opened up the greens for golfers mid-winter. Siddick says that's just a risk Bloomington courses are not willing to take. The ground is, for all practical purposes, semi-frozen. Uh, the frost is not down very far, if any. So the top layer thaws out when it gets a little warmer, and every divot and every ball mark is not going to come, it's not going to regrow. Come spring, I can't imagine what some of the golf courses, especially the busy ones. And if, and if they're allowing carts out, there's no growing, so it's, it's the constant wear. There'll be wear patterns coming on and off greens. A lot of dead grass and we're just not willing to take the chance for the limited amount of revenue to have to repair it and not have it very, very playable for our players in the spring. While the greens will remain quiet this time of year, Siddick would like to encourage residents to come out to the Duan Clubhouse now, long before the greens are ready for play. We are open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. until 3 o'clock. We welcome card players. We serve a great breakfast, a great lunch at a very, very reasonable price, and we'd love to have people come out. And as staff at both Duan and Highland Greens Golf Course anxiously await the 2012 golf season, residents visiting Highland are in for a treat this spring as the new Real Grass 32 station hitting range is set to open in the middle of Highland this spring. A growing trend is finding its way into the Mall of America and one new store is helping residents take the first steps to a healthier life. Take a look. Get your laces tied tight and ready, set, walk. When visiting the Mall of America, it's easy to assume the bustling residents hitting the hallways are shopping for their next big sale, but that's not always the case. Employees from the new Mayo Clinic Healthy Living Store inside MOA encourages residents to look up when shopping around MOA. What they will see is they'll see signs marking the Mayo Clinic mile which directs you kind of up and down the major entrances to the mall and will lead you on either a one mile, a 5k or a 10k route. Follow the signs and embark on your journey. With the unpredictability of Minnesota weather, these routes offer a warm, dry climate with lots to look at and even a chance to spot a nice buy along the way. Well, walking is a great exercise. It's very simple, uh, you don't need a lot of practice, and it's uh, very safe for walkers. Inside the mall here, you don't have to contend with any of the Minnesota winters or anything like that, so it's a great environment for a great activity. Depending on the length of walk you're going to try, the routes vary. Mayo Clinic has route maps available at the information desks throughout the mall. Or if you'd like some general tips on healthy walking, Mayo has a support system on hand for that as well. We have a great variety of resources. We do have staff on hand that is uh, trained in health and wellness. We also can direct them to resources on mayoclinic.com as well as we have a multitude of books uh, and literature that guests can read through. Some of that literature includes the interactive touchscreen stations located right inside Mayo Clinic Healthy Living. 
These here are informational kiosks um, that guests can look at the different topics that we have available here between nutrition, physical activity, stress, and sleep management. Uh, uh, it's very simple. Uh, you just touch on the topic that you want to look through and then we have different videos that you can watch in the upper right hand corner as well as uh, the written content we have in the lower right hand corner. Each topic also has an interactive within it. This one here is calculating your target heart rate and it's something very simple. You can simply select uh, the age that you are and then just press next and it will give you a range to keep your heart rate in. And then each topic that we have has an interactive like that available. So the next time you're at the Mall of America, follow the signage and walk your way to a healthier you. The Mayo Clinic Healthy Living Store is located right off the rotunda at the Mall of America. To find out more details and services offered or if you have questions about the Mayo Clinic Mile, visit the Mall of America's website and search Mayo Clinic. City Human Services is offering residents another way to stay active this winter and we hope your bowling skills are sharp for this one. Every Friday afternoon you will find a devoted group of bowlers at Creekside Community Center. No, there's no alley inside Creekside, but these days any room can be transformed into a bowling alley. All it takes is a video game console, remote controls, and a friendly matchup between players. Once a player gets a feel for the Wii controller, the game becomes fun and easy while directly benefiting the health of seniors. The American Heart Association even endorses Nintendo Wii, estimating that 70% of Americans aren't getting enough exercise. The Heart Association is proud to partner with Nintendo to promote a fun and easy route into a routine of physical activity. Human Services has been sponsoring the Senior Wii Bowling League since July of 2010, and the response has so far been great. Well, we just have fun in the group. I mean, we cheer for each other and have a ball. It's very humbling, but everybody laughs and they cheer you on. It's no com competition, you know. We're all in it together. Residents with disabilities and people 55 and older are invited to stop out to Creekside Community Center on Fridays at 1 p.m. to give Wee Bowling a try. And on this week's In the Loop segment, we'll head back to the Minnesota Valley Wildlife Refuge. This time, however, we won't be hitting the miles of trails. Instead, we'll check out what the refuge has to offer indoors. Take a look. It's often been said that the South Loop District is the city's greatest untapped resource. And one major reason behind that is the 14,000 acres of natural habitat spanning the Minnesota River. What this part of the refuge does is it actually gives people an opportunity to be outside in nature. And we don't have paved trails, we don't have picnic grounds, we don't have playgrounds. So it's as natural of an area as you can possibly find in a city of millions of people. The eight miles of trail in Bloomington alone and the general convenience of the refuge are obvious. But what many residents don't know is the fun and learning that happens inside the doors of the Refuge Visitors Center, something that is especially vital for our area youth. I think the most important thing is being able to discover on your own. If someone tells you a fact, you may or may not remember it. If you find that out on your own, you're going to remember it, and if you really understand it, you're going to be able to tell somebody else about it too. So kids remember so much more when they get to touch and feel and explore for themselves. Park rangers and volunteer naturalists are on hand to answer questions. Today we sat in with a group of kids, grades ranging from first to third. They first learned why the seasons changed based on the sun and the Earth's orbit around it. They also learned what kinds of animals migrate, hibernate, and change their coats for the cooler months. A lot of people think that in winter there's no life, everything's dead, migrated, hibernating, but that's really not true. There's a lot of animals that have to survive the winter, like certain birds and coyotes and fox. The group even bundled up and took their exploring out of the classroom. The kids, along with park ranger Kristen, were looking for signs of animals in the winter. They looked for holes in trees that could be used as winter homes, mice tunnels in the prairie, 
muskrat dams by Longmeadow Lake, and various other signs that animals had been there. So I want everybody to find a twig that's had the bud ripped off by deer. Folks at the refuge believe winter is a time for animals to hibernate, not people. So stop by the visitor center and see the many perks they have to offer. For more information on the Minnesota Valley Wildlife Refuge, you're just a click away. Head to the city's website, keyword search South Loop. Here you can learn more about what's happening in the loop as well as find a link to the Minnesota Valley National Wildlife Refuge website. It's now time for a short break. When we come back, we'll be joined by a representative from a Bloomington youth organization offering hope and guidance to at-risk teens. Stay right here. Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Anyone can see it. Family, friends, anyone. Remember, think before you post. Welcome back to Bloomington Today. We're now happy to welcome Andy Swanda to the show. Andy comes to us from an organization that is called Treehouse. Welcome, Andy. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, for people who aren't aware, why don't you start by introducing residents to what Treehouse is? Well, Treehouse is a nonprofit organization, and we pride ourselves on working with all teenagers, but specifically with at-risk teens. And we have seven locations on the Minneapolis side of town. So we work with kids from 15 different school districts in 22 communities as far north as Brooklyn Park, as far south as Bloomington. We're going to expand in the St. Paul side of town this coming year, but our roots go back almost 30 years. And our founder, his name was Fred Peterson, and he, as a public school teacher, he just, he felt the needs and the pains of his kids very personally. And it was a series of a couple events that happened three days in a row, and he realized that he just wasn't able to meet the needs of kids to the level that he wanted to because when the bell rang at say three o'clock all bets were off and kids were going back to in a lot of cases really destructive behaviors and he was witnessing at-risk behavior and he was seeing and hearing these pains and it was after one of his students um, ended up being killed by you know as a result of just incredible intoxication and a horrible accident that he finally said enough's enough there's something I feel like I could be doing and he just felt called to start what would end up becoming Treehouse and as legend has it he literally he went to the administrators of public schools that he knew and he handed a blank sheet of paper across the desk and he said give me the names of 10 kids that if they didn't come back to your school tomorrow your life as an administrator would actually be easier and these were low performing kids they were trouble kids a lot of crime a lot of violence in the school and those are the types of kids that Fred and his volunteers first started to work with and that's still how you know when we start a new community we still intentionally go and we look for who are those types of kids whether it's in partnerships with schools um, civic and local authorities we go to section 8 housing but we're looking for the types of kids that most desperately need a helping hand to walk alongside them absolutely um, you know tree treehouse really prides itself in being a safe place for teens what what does that mean well, when I think of it being a safe place, I think of it on two levels. First of all, a physically safe place. The reality, sadly, is a lot of our kids do come to us and they're all too familiar with what it means to be either the victim of crime or violence, physical abuse or sexual abuse. And how do we have a place that is um, physically safe? You know, we have a couple of our locations, you know, whether it's, uh, say, New Hope or even Chaska, there is, you know, gang related behavior happening in the community. And Trios prides itself on historically, even when we've had members of rival gangs involved in Trios at the same time, they have intentionally said, hey, we're gonna come to agreement. This is a place where any of our gang related stuff, it, it, it can't happen here. So that it's very physically safe so that any kid can enter and that hopefully then some relational walls 
can start to break down. And then that's that next layer of safety where it can be emotionally safe. Because a lot of our kids, they especially on, say, a Tuesday night support group, they start to hear what some of their same age peers are sharing about their lives, and they realize, man, things in my life are pretty darn hard, but so is theirs. Mm -hmm. And they start to hear these stories, and then they start to share about some of their pain and some of the unique struggles they're going alongside. And then for them to collectively hear, again, from their peers and support group, you know, really priceless message, you know, and their peers communicate, you know, after kids share, hey, you're lovable, you're capable, and you're worthwhile. And that's such a priceless and a precious message that too many of our teens, they don't hear in their normal lives, whether it's at home or at school or in their community. So they come to Treehouse and they start to hear these messages and they feel, okay, not only is this safe, but I'm being poured into mm -hmm. and cared for by peers and adults. Wonderful. Well, you know, teen issues today are certainly different than they were even when I was a teen, when you were a teen. You know, talk a bit about some of the issues that you find that the teens coming into Treehouse are facing today. Well, you nailed it. It is different. You know, kids are kids are kids, and, you know, my children are going to inherit a lot of the same things that today's teens are dealing with that we dealt with when we were in high school but just some of the numbers are staggering you know whether it's one in eight adolescents is being diagnosed with a depression you know the fact that suicide is the second leading cause of death in 15 to 24 year olds or you know going back to abuse over two-thirds of the victims of sexual victims of sexual assault um, the ones that actually do get reported are children under the age of 18 I mean the, our kids are we use that term a lot, you know, they are forced to grow up too fast and they really are because they're seeing s the difficult and the hard and the painful sides of life at home and at school and then that continues to carry on into who they become and who they choose to associate themselves with. You know, we believe that as kids, um, as these pains and as these scars are inflicted either willingly, they're choosing to bring these things into their lives or at the hands of others, um, it can have really damaging repercussions in who they either choose to become or who they naturally become in a treehouse. We hope to, um, to intercede there because we believe that the collective information, it really does beg a response That's from true. the local communities. Well, absolutely. And, you know, the next, the next thing I wanted to get into was I wanted you to tell me a bit about a, a, a teen <laughs> that has come in, you know, what they were like coming in and what they left you know, Treehouse, or if they're still coming to yeah. Treehouse, you know, give us a, a success story, kind of the, what ideally you would like to see happen mm -hmm. when teens choose to become involved with an organization like Treehouse. Well, I think, you know, our, our end goal, we have multiple results that we want to see in the lives of kids. We want to see them graduate high school. We want to see them pursue some kind of an educational or vocational track. We want them to get engaged in positive relationships with their peers, with adults, you know, it, folks in their community. And sadly, so many of our kids, they come to us without hope and very broken. And, you know, I didn't mention it before, but our mission statement is how do we bring hope into the lives of hurting youth and families? And so many of our kids come to us where hope has just kind of been pounded out of them. And, and that's just their reality. And I do, I think of one boy, I'll, I'll call him Tom, and he came with um, numerous pains, you know, the, uh, the suicide of a loved one, somebody he really trusted in his family. Um, multiple things happened. He was a low performer in school. And again, the hope just kept going away and away to the point where he, he started to get involved in Treehouse, um, but he had decided, and he shares this now in his story, he had decided to take his own life and he had the plans fully laid out. He had written all the goodbye notes to, to the people that he had cared about, some family and friends. And uh, he had made the decision to um, carry out, sadly, the end of his life after a service trip with some of his treehouse peers and staff. So he goes on the trip, you know, in, in a work of, or uh, excuse me, a week of working together, doing life together, um, his staff person pursued him and they just had a one-on-one, -on -one, cause the staff person could tell that something was mm -hmm. happening in Tom's life. And Tom did, he opened up and he just felt compelled to share, here's where I'm at, here's what I'm planning to do. And you know, th for us it's a tremendous success story cause they went home from the trip and the first thing they did was um, they went back to Tom's house, gathered up all the notes, and they burned them together. And, you know, Tom went from being, like I said, underperformer in school. He's now on track to graduate high school. And not only is he going to go to college, but he wants to go to the college where his treehouse staff person went okay. because he now has an adult that he can say, okay, I want to be like this adult yeah. in my life who has poured so much into me. 
So literally to feel like this is a life that we saved, we intervened and we were able to take part in saving. And as a result, Tom has hope for his future. That's great. Well, you know, I first learned about Treehouse through retired police officer Jim Cowie. So obviously you guys are involved in the community quite a bit. And I want you to kind of finalize things by telling us about this hooping it Hooping it up for hope event yes. that um, we have some video of and that um, you're going to tell us about. We have another one of those coming up here next month, I believe. Tell us about hooping it up for hope. Well, in, uh, the date is going to be February 26th, and it's in the Mall of America Rotunda. And for us, this is a new event. We have a handful of fundraisers that we do, that like all nonprofits do, and some really fun ones. But this is just super unique, and we're hoping to replicate it in individual communities so that you know, a local treehouse, they can find a gym and they can do hooping it up. And um, it's basically where teams come together of you know, five member teams, and they're going to shoot free throws. So it's a free throw shooting contest. Anybody can chuck balls at a hoop, so it's not a three on three. You don't have to be a proficient ball player. But uh, so we're going to be in the rotunda, and you know, ultimately, all the proceeds go to benefit kids. Being at the Mall of America, it raises awareness. It gives us great visibility to thousands of folks who are going to walk past that location. And uh, you know, nice, uh, you know, carrot on top is the winning team from each location gets to shoot at a Timberwolves game later this spring. Wow. All right. Well, um, we'd like to thank Andy for being with us today. If you'd like any more information about Treehouse or any of the things we talked about today, we encourage you to visit their website at www.treehouseyouth.org. It's now time for a short break. We'll be right back. You taught him how to hit a baseball, how to hit a receiver, the strike zone. A nine iron, the net. Even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Listen up, energy hogs. Get in there and waste some energy. It's hot water for just one pair of pants. Leaky windows, too. Keep wasting. They'll never know what hit them. What the? Boss, they're home. And they've got energy efficient bulbs. Ah! You've got the power to get rid of energy hogs. You can update appliances and lots of other things. Get the tips you need at energyhog.org. And play fun games, too. Get the energy hogs out of your home. Hey, wait for me. Welcome back to Bloomington Today. If you haven't marked your calendars yet, get on it so you don't miss the 2012 Home Improvement Fair. On February 25th from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., Civic Plaza will be transformed into a home improvement how-to haven. There are more than 60 vendors for this year's fair, all on hand to help you make the most of your home. City staff and exhibitors will present 16 how-to seminars in addition to a keynote speaker discussing organization in your home. The 2010 event attracted more than 1,800 residents and HRA employees and other city staff. Hope attendance is even higher this year. Be sure to tune in to Bloomington today on February 15th, and that'll run through the 22nd. HRA Program Manager Brian Hartman will be in the studio with us to highlight key speakers, booths, and seminars you won't want to miss. Well, at a recent Bloomington Chamber of Commerce meeting, Congressman Eric Paulson stopped by to share some of his experience representing the Southwest Metro in Washington, D.C. Congressman Paulson also discussed some of the things he would like to see tackled in the new year. There's a lot more to be done uh, for sure, especially when you think about the needs to focus on job creation. Keep that in the four months of, uh, I, I guess, in, in the forefront of what we need to do and how we need to do it. And, and really getting the economy going is, is critical. And, you know, from a small business perspective and a chamber perspective, I know you can appreciate that. Unemployment's still too high. It's better in Minnesota than it is in other states. We know that. But there's still very anemic economic growth. Uh, and a lot of people, quite honestly, have stopped looking for work as well. And I know that the job fairs, I've had two job fairs right here in Bloomington, actually, down in Normandale. And a couple thousand people show up for these. And, you know, if you look around the audience or, or the folks that attend, 
it's folks in their mid-40s, middle management, and that's where the struggle still is. And you want to make sure that those people have the opportunities. There are several chances to watch this interesting and informative meeting with Congressman Eric Paulson on the Bloomington Channel 14. The first airtime will begin on Monday, January 23rd at 11 p.m. You can also find it on Tuesday the 24th at 5 p.m., Saturday, January 28th at 7 p.m., and a variety of other times that are sure to meet even the trickiest of schedules. For a complete list of upcoming airtimes for Congressman Eric Paulson's presentation to the Bloomington Chamber, visit www.tbc14.org and check the show schedules starting for January 23rd. Are you looking for a summer job? We may have the perfect opportunity within Bloomington Parks and Recreation Division. Checking out open positions and applying online is quick and easy. This year there are two job opportunities in place. The first are openings with summer youth and family programs like Camp Coda and Summer Adventure Playgrounds. Also, positions at the Bloomington Family Aquatic Center and Bush Lake Beach are open for applicants. Swim instructors, lifeguards, along with concession and admission attendants have openings. To apply, navigate to the Parks and Recreation homepage and click the link for Seasonal Jobs. Then you'll see a list of available positions. Click on them to read more about the specific tasks and requirements. Then apply when you think you've found the one that suits you. All aquatic applicants will be notified by March 9th if they are selected to continue on with the application process. If chosen, group interviews for youth and family applicants will be held on March 10th or the 17th. If you have questions, contact Parks and Recreation at 952-563-8877. And that's all the time we have for today. To get more information on city projects, parks, road construction, and events, visit the city's website. To check out past Bloomington Today shows or other city productions, visit Bloomington's YouTube channel, accessible right from the city's homepage. That and so much more is online right now at www.ci.bloomington.mn.us. If Facebook or Twitter isn't your thing, sign up for eSubscribe to have updates sent right to your email or cell phone. This is Bloomington Today, a presentation of the City of Bloomington's Communications Division. I'm Kaylin Cockrell. Thanks so much for joining us.